hi friends, it's me Cheyenne and I'm here to do nails. I have one set of nails today because one of my clients had to cancel and I'm doing a lash lift. I'm pretty excited to do these nails because I think I will work in airbrush, something that I like pick up here and there. I think I've said in my previous videos, it's not something that like I specialize in. I just like to have different art materials to try out and like mm, do different effects. So my client gave me some inspiration that was pretty like the colors were very prominent So I'm just gonna work off of that color palette more so than the images and the style that they requested Which is like 3d bling blob style. So I'm gonna do some 3d. I'm going to add some crystals I'm gonna hopefully do a little bit of airbrush, which will be fun I have some older stencils from a company in Russia that I got for my birthday a couple years ago. What else? I haven't really been filming a lot in the last couple weeks. Um, I have been filming my services when I remember, but it's actually been like quite a difficult time for me emotionally. My mom passed away around this time, uh, like maybe three or four years ago, and I've been grieving. From what I hear, it can happen forever, so that's okay, but definitely just like not really feeling like myself. Also, I've been getting a new allergy if you follow my Instagram stories and it was on my face, it's okay right now. But I started a new allergy rash cream and one of the side effects is acne. <laughs> I'm like, I'm way too old to be getting acne, but I got like a really bad breakout on the side of my face, mostly that got the allergy rash cream and I picked it. And it made me not want to make videos, which is pretty silly, but uh, <laughs> I don't mind coming on here and being pretty real, but sometimes you've just got to do what you feel is best. I've gotten all my stuff ready, my lash lift stuff. I've looked at my inspiration. I'm pretty sure I know what I'm going to do with this nail set. I also forgot my glasses, so I have to wear my weird safety glasses, prescription safety glasses that I got, which... Remember I showed you my goggles? Well, I got these goggles that were supposed to, you see there's a little thing right there. They're supposed to protect your eyes, but they don't fit my face because my face is like different than a lot of other people's faces. So I had to add extra goggle from another pair of goggles and plastic around the eyes. So then I'm more protected. Here's something funny again. But see? because the fumes of the products like go up and it irritates my eyelid. So having something that covers my eyes while I work and try to figure out what I'm gonna do next for a product is very important. Allergies in the nail industry are pretty weird because I feel it's like kind of taboo to talk about even though if you're allergic to a dog or cat like, you can freely say that and people won't be freaked out but we also as nail techs work with some we work with like a lot of different chemicals and some of them actually are known to be a very strong allergen and for some people like me even if you are responsible with the product and you aren't touching it to your skin you can become allergic to dust um, even like a tiny bit of residue not like a huge huge amount can cause an allergy, which is what happened to me this time because I just used something that like my body decided to react to, you know, and doesn't like the fumes of or the dust and I'm allergic to it. I don't know. I think it's the idea of like clean beauty and what your chemical composition of your product is free from kind of like causes like a weird reaction from people when you ask about does your product contain this? monomer or this acrylate because I'm allergic to. Sometimes people can be really like weird about it. You know, I'm clearly just asking for safety and I don't really believe in clean beauty. I think there are really cool ingredients, some that could be cool, but to me, a 10 free formula doesn't mean anything. It's just like a marketing ploy and uh, I just need to know if I'm allergic to something or not. It doesn't necessarily make a product safe or effective and sometimes effective products aren't that safe. And I also think even if you're not allergic and you've never had a reaction to dust or a product, it doesn't necessarily mean it's a good idea to get it on your skin because the chemicals do still go into your skin. It's just that your body doesn't react to them in the same way that somebody with an allergy does. That's something to think about, you know, wear thick gloves. Even if you have like a good dust collector, 
the dust, there's still like micro fine dust that's in the air and it's important to protect yourself because it's fun doing nails and it's a cool job where you get to express yourself creatively. It's just so weird to me that, you know, we're not taught to be as safe as we should be. We're not taught like how people who do like body shop work on cars or people who work in sculpting like statues or houses, make building houses, like they're taught to wear a lot of safety equipment. But for us, we're not really taught that. Like we're just told wear a mask when you're filing, put a towel down, don't get the product on your skin. But we're not fully explained the actual things that could happen to us through a product allergy or like inhaling too many fumes of airborne chemicals. And I think that's like kind of shitty. And I hope that people who are educators, who are teaching people programs for nails, maybe think that over one day because I feel like it's just really important information and I wish it's information that I would have gotten. The way my body works, I probably would have became allergic anyways, no matter what, which is kind of the case of this second allergy. But I wish I was given that information in a very transparent way versus maybe put your gloves on because you might get an allergy and then no one telling me how painful and like psychologically traumatizing <laughs> the allergy actually is. <laughs> anyways. Thanks for listening to me about allergies. Uh, I might put this in. I think this is important information for people. And yeah, pretty random me babbling about stuff, but I'm pretty random babbler when I have something to say. Okay guys, I'll see you in my set. Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I am Cheyenne and I make videos about nails. Today I'm doing a set that is airbrushed and inspired by the bisexual pride flag, perfect for pride month. So first off, I'm doing a couple layers of this blue gel by Ice Gel and then I'm going to put an overlay gel on and buff the surface so the acrylic paint has something to stick to. If you don't buff the nails when you're using acrylic paint, it can chip. The main reason why I decided to start testing acrylic paint airbrush is because I have a gel allergy. If you watched earlier in the video, I explained a little bit about it. It's important for me to keep healthy and also keep my clients healthy and safe. Recently, I saw a video that advised using a Vaseline as a barrier when using thin down gel as your medium. And I just wanna say I strongly advise not taking this advice if you see that come up. Vaseline is not a strong enough barrier to keep the gel off the skin and even if your client is not allergic to gel, the more exposure, it is called an overexposure allergy, your client gets to gel, the more of a chance there is to get an allergy. As you can see, a vertical ombre is quite nice with this set and it's pretty easy to do with an airbrush. I know that it would have been even easier if my airbrush wasn't damaged, but I am doing what I can with what I have. Since the acrylic paint is quite thin, it dries pretty quickly. Like I said, my needle and nozzle are damaged, so I don't think I'm getting the most perfect uh, accurate effect of this, but it is really impressive and I enjoy it a lot. I'm actually using a Q-tip to clean up spatter that was on the nail. The spatter is there because like I said, it broke my airbrush. After I paint the nails and they're fully dry, I put this stencil onto the nail and gently pat it down. I think that maybe I should have pressed a little harder because I did have some leakage in the stencil. That's also probably because of my technique. Because my airbrush is broken, uh, <laughs> the trigger control is quite hard and uh, yeah, things just aren't working as well as I would have liked them to. But honestly, this set did turn out really well with the materials that I had and how they were performing. Another reason why airbrushes can spatter is because they're not cleaned properly, but let me tell you, I definitely cleaned this properly to the degree that I bent my needle and also damaged my nozzle. I don't advise aggressively cleaning your airbrush. I think it's probably a gentle process. I'm still learning how to clean it properly, like in the sense of not damaging parts because I can be a little bit rough. I am pretty strong and uh, yeah, that's something that I definitely need to look into. I'm using a sticky primer by Light Elegance so that the paint doesn't chip. Because it's acrylic paint, it doesn't stick to itself like gel does. And I'm using my good old Ice Gel Charm Gel to create these little dots that I'm going to be putting little baubles on, which are currently my favorite glass piece to put on a nail. They're really cute. 
On one hand, I put the baubles on before I did the 3D, and the other hand, I did the 3D and then put the baubles on. And I would say probably put the baubles on before the 3D. I think it actually makes it easier. And the nice thing about this design is that anywhere where I thought my stencil was a little bit leaky, I'll be putting 3D gel on top of and it won't show up as much and it will look quite neat. And guys, if you're new here or a returning visitor, please don't forget to like this video. It helps put my videos in the algorithm and I really enjoy making videos and sharing these with other people, so it'd be great help. And don't forget to follow me on Instagram. I post lots of different nails on there. Now I'm using that same charm gel to make the little lines for the 3D element and I'm putting a little bit more gel over some really big crystals. Then I go in with a thin top coat and I just shimmy it all over the nails and here they are. This is what the finished final look is and thanks so much for watching.